God for his mercy tonight. Amen. Y'all worship with us. You are the love of my life. Lord, you are that hope that I cling to. church say amen is that your song unto the lord tonight amen let's give the lord a hand as our pastor's coming around and obey the lord praise the lord amen turn with me if you would in your bibles to the book of isaiah the book of isaiah Amen. The book of Isaiah. Just a couple weeks ago as I began to study um, and I praying and seeking the Lord on which direction to go. You know, I don't have a series. Uh, um, and the Lord's been laying on my heart the book of Isaiah and the book of Romans. And so I started diving into the book of Isaiah and I want us to take a look at it tonight. And uh, this is going to be a little bit different, so I'm going to sort of slow down and teach like some of the nights I do, some of the services I do, uh, amen, and uh, I have some information from the Open Bible, it's a King James Version Bible, with some notes, and I just think there's some good highlights, so I'm going to share some of those with you, and then we'll go right into chapter 2, and we'll try to look at chapter 2, 3, and 4, sort of an overview as we begin to go through the book of Isaiah, amen, studying the book of Isaiah. So what I want to use as our text tonight, if you will turn over to chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 7, and then chapter 53, verse 6, chapter 53, verse 6, amen. And we're going to use this as our text as we take a look at the book of Isaiah. Now, I've already preached from chapter 1. Chapter 1 is an overview of the entire book of Isaiah. Amen. So we encourage you to begin reading and studying the book of Isaiah over the next few weeks. Amen. Let's see what we can take out of this book. Amen. Uh, golden nuggets that the Lord wants us to have. Amen. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 7. And then chapter 53, verse 6. If you have it, say amen. Let us read. The Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government 
and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Then chapter 53, verse 6. The Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. So tonight we're going to take a look at the book of Isaiah. Amen. Would you stretch your hand this way, pray with us, pray for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity tonight to come before your people to break the bread of life. Father, we can do nothing within and of ourselves. We're dependent upon you, Holy Ghost, to anoint us and to use us for the glory of God. Lord, we ask that you would raise a standard against the enemy, grant liberty for the proclamation of your word through teaching and ministry. Father, we pray that hearts and minds would be open to receive the engrafting of your holy word. Lord, that there may be application that we can build a most holy faith, walk out this faith, bring an honor and glory to your name. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that your name would be glorified, and that the church would be edified. We'll be careful to give you all the praise for what you, for what you accomplished for the next little while. It's in Jesus' name we humbly pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Just for a moment, let me give an introduction. But for uh, just for a survey, how many of you remember the book of, uh, of Isaiah? How many of you have read it? Amen. Some of us have read it more than once. Amen. Hallelujah. What, what is the gist of Isaiah? Who was Isaiah? I was going to put a board up and I was going to say before we go through this, who was Isaiah? What do we know about the book of Isaiah? What do we know about the man Isaiah? Anybody? What was that? He was a man of unclean lips, he said. He was a prophet. What did he mean when he said he is a man of unclean lips? Where is that coming from? It's, it's dealing with the altar, but that's chapter 6, right? That was the call of Isaiah. Amen? And we'll look at that a little later as we study the book of Isaiah. So he's a prophet. Amen? Is that all you know? My job will be easy tonight. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's take a look now at a survey of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is like a Shakespeare. Y'all, anybody go to college, you read Shakespeare? Or in high school, you read some of the works of Shakespeare? Well, he's considered like a Shakespeare of prophets. And uh, often, he's been called an evangelical prophet, an evangelical prophet. Amen? And uh, because he's very clear on the messianic prophecies that are given in his book. Amen. So Isaiah is a prophet, and he would be considered a major prophet, and he is one that gave a lot of prophecy concerning uh, Jesus and his Messiahship. Are you with me? Amen. And so it's broken up. If you take a survey, it's uh, broken up into the prophecies of condemnation. How many of you know what condemnation is? Judgment, right? So he talks about judgment in chapters 1 through chapter 35, and he sort of breaks that down. And then there's a little historical parentheses in between. That's chapter 36 through 39. And then finally in chapter 40 through 66, there's prophecies of comfort. Are you with me? So there are prophecies of condemnation. There's a historical parenthesis, and then there is prophecies of comfort that he gives. Amen. So when we take a look at the prophecies of condemnation, chapter 1, he's talking about, uh, his message is talking, or basically chapter 1 just overviews the whole book. Are you with me? Remember I preached a message about God's judgment upon Judah and Jerusalem. Amen. And so that's sort of an overview of the entire book. Of Isaiah, So go back and read chapter 1 this week, amen, if you're able to do it before the weekend, 
uh, before next Wednesday, read through the book of Isaiah chapter 1. Also, we encourage you to read through chapter 4, the end of chapter 4. Amen. So it's, it's uh, chapter 1 just summarizes everything. So Judah has a lot of moral and spiritual disease. Amen. And that's what he's talking about. And so the people, they were neglecting God. Amen. Uh, and uh, a lot of people today are neglecting God. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. We, we are doing our own business. We're doing our own things. We're caught up in our own ways. Come on, amen. And so if we're not careful, we'll be just like Judah. We'll be just like Israel. Amen. Remember, this is a divided kingdom during the time of Isaiah. So you got the, the northern and the southern kingdom, and we'll understand more about that from our Sunday school lessons. Amen. But here, uh, amen, Judah, amen, is neglecting God and have bowed down to ritualism and selfishness. Ritualism and selfishness. Well, what is that? That's coming to church on Sunday morning, giving in your offerings, paying your tithes, going home. That's coming back to church on Sunday evening, giving in an offering, singing a song, doing a little something for the Lord, and then going back home. But you never get out in the community. Amen. You just got in a ritual. You got in a routine. You've got in a religious facade. Are you with me? Amen. So we have to be very careful. Amen. And uh, amen. I don't have time to go knock door to door. I don't have time to go and witness. I don't have time to go to Walmart and give out tracts because I've got to get rest. And before I get rest, I need to go to Lowe's because i got to pick up supplies. And I've got some uh, projects that I want to do on my house in the bathroom. Are you with me? Amen. So it's all about me. Amen. Uh, we didn't take time to say, God, what would you have me to do today? God, where would you have me to go today? I know I understand, and I know that I've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. I don't belong to myself anymore. I belong to you, God. I, I'm an instrument in your hands, God. What would you have me to do today? Many times we're doing our business, and God will interrupt us and try to get our attention, but a lot of times we get, we're so caught up in what we're doing, we just sort of overshadow or... Amen. Sort of uh, put to silence the voice of God, the still small voice of God. Are y'all with me? Amen. And so if we're not careful, we'll get caught up just like Judah did. Amen. In ritualism and selfishness. But Yahweh, God, graciously invites them to repent and return to him. Isn't that what the message has been lately? God is calling for the church to repent. God is calling for his people to return unto him. Amen. In other words, and uh, amen, I'm going to share with you on Sunday evening, if the Lord permits, uh, Doug Small. I know we've been listening to some of his uh, CDs or DVDs on uh, CDs on Zechariah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just sort of share with you some highlights from the third CD of the first volume and see if you like it that way better so then I could just listen to it and write some highlights and share it that way and sometimes you might want to listen because I'm sure he's going to give more gold uh, amen than I can give you gold, golden nuggets are you with me? amen but we'll share it that way and see how you like receiving it uh, uh, you know versus me hashing it out and sharing it with you and then listening to him amen but, but we're going to learn more about uh, humility and so forth we're going to learn more about uh, being less self-centered and more Christ-centered. Amen? Are you all with me? So Isaiah, his call is seen in chapter 6. And then the book of Emmanuel, chapter 7 through 12. So when you're reading chapter 7 through 12, amen, it's a book of Emmanuel. It's the book of showing that God is with us. Are you with me? Amen. So when you study the book of Isaiah, chapter 7 through 12, it's talking about how that God is with us, Emmanuel. And then the prophet moves from local judgment to regional judgment. Amen. He talks about how judgment will fall upon the surrounding nations of Israel. That's found in chapter 13 through chapter 23. And then we see the apocalypse of Isaiah. It's a small or de declared as a little apocalypse. Amen. It's a, a, it's a snapshot of end time prophecy. And that's found in chapter 24 through chapter 27. Chapter 24 through chapter 27. So if you don't have an open Bible and you don't have this information, this is good information to have as you read and study the book of Isaiah. Amen. And so he talks about the different nations. He lists them here. Amen. And then, uh, amen, so after the apocalypse, it's talking about, uh, amen, universal tribulation, which will be followed by blessing of the kingdom. Amen. So we're looking for 
the judgment of God, but we're also looking for the rapture of the church. We're looking for a latter-day outpouring of His Spirit. Lots of things are going to culminate in just a short time. Amen. I believe there's going to be a, a move towards a false peace, and World War III might break out before that actual peace is realized. Uh, amen. The church is going to be in revival. God's going to rapture the church out of here. The restraining force is going to re be removed, and the Antichrist is going to come on the scene. And so if we'll study the book of Isaiah, chapter 24 through 27, we'll begin to see how this sort of overlays or tells us more about the tribulation period and then the coming of the millennial kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. And then chapter 28 through 33 uh, pronounces six woes to Israel and Judah for specific sins. So you can learn about some of the specific sins of Israel and Judah, the divided kingdoms. Amen. And you can learn how God sent his judgment. Amen. Uh, he goes on about condemnation and how it uh, ends up, amen. It will end up with a, a general picture of international devastation. It's almost like what we're seeing and uh, things are getting set in place even now for an international devastation. I mean, we've got uh, chaos going on all over this nation, amen. And not just in this nation, but there's a lot of things happening in Russia. There's a lot of things happening in North Korea. There's a lot of things happening in Iran. There's a lot of things happening in Iraq. There's a lot of things going on in Africa that we don't really get the news on. Amen. Can you imagine uh, the world news and how, uh, amen, how that it may not show the whole picture? Because as we look at our nation, the news, different uh, broadcasts uh, are showing us the news through their own uh, slanted views. Are you with me? Amen. So we have to be very careful of the information that we're getting concerning the situation of the world. Amen. In other nations, there's a great revival taking place in the church realm. Amen. Many hundreds are coming to the Lord every day. But here in America, 12 to 13,000 churches a year are closing down. Amen. There's an apathy in America, there's apathy concerning church, amen? We have a generation that's coming up that knows not God. Are y'all with me? Amen. But I believe God's about to start a fire, amen? I, I said we saw some flickering of that fire on last Sunday and in revival last week, and I believe God's going to stir up the church, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want him to start with me, amen, to stir me up. Hallelujah, let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in me. Hallelujah, that others would see the zeal that I have for the Lord and they would have a desire for the things of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Then he talks about in chapter 36 through chapter 39, to his, there's a historical parenthesis, and it takes a look back in 701 B.C. of how the Assyrians invaded Judah and, and it anticipates the, the, uh, amen, the, the soon coming Babylonian uh, uh, amen, oppression and taking over and leading into captivity the children of Israel, amen, Judah. So not only did the Assyrians overtake them, but, but soon the Babylonians. And Isaiah is speaking this in prophecy, and the, uh, amen, in Iraq, a Babylon is not even a, a world power yet, but it comes to pass, amen. And we have to remember a couple things about the scripture, amen. There, it's, uh, what is it? It's, um, Twofold or threefold, I can't remember the exact words uh, that we, we would say. So it has uh, like a twofold or a threefold meaning. Amen. So it could have a prophetic significance, or it could have a historical significance, a prophetic significance, and it could also have a practical significance. Are y'all with me? So sometimes there are layers to Scripture, things that we're reading, things that we're studying. God is trying to share with us history of what happened to a people because of the way they behaved, amen? But also it's prophetic to a people if they behave that way. That's how the judgment of God will come to such a people. Are you with me? Amen. So there's practical significance is that, that we can learn from the mistakes of others. Amen. The Bible says in the New Testament these are in samples. The Old Testament happenings are in samples or examples to us. Amen. To warn us. Amen. On how we can have the blessings and favor of God or we can be under the cursing and the chastising of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to be under the hand of favor and blessing. I don't want to be under the hand of uh, cursing and chastening. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he talks about that in the historical parentheses. He's talking about how God did it before and how God's going to send judgment again. Prophecies of, of comfort in uh, chapters 40 through 66. So there, these are 
uh, scriptures dealing with a hope, dealing with a promise, amen? So God's promise of hope, it's the base, and the basis of this hope is God's sovereignty, amen? We got to remember as true believers in Christ, amen, that although it looks chaotic and although it looks hopeless, there's hope, amen? I said there's hope, and what is his name? Jesus, amen? There's hope uh, in Jesus. There's hope uh, in Christ alone. Come on, amen? If I put my faith and confidence in myself, there is no hope. If I put my faith and confidence in a Little Rock Holiness Church, uh, amen, I might lose hope. Hallelujah. But if I'll keep my faith, my confidence, and my trust uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, amen, there is always hope. Uh, can somebody say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. His sovereignty. God is sovereign. His majesty. Amen. He is king. Hallelujah. Jesus is king of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like I say, he has a trifold ministry. He was here as a prophet. Amen. He is now in the tabernacle. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's the advocate. He's the mediator. He's the intercessor. Come on. Amen. He's the high priest that's touched by our infirmities. He knows what we're feeling. He knows in all points he was tempted like as we are tempted. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we're faced with a temptation, he'll make a way of escape. Come on. Amen. You don't have to say the devil made me do it. Come on. It was your flesh. Uh, it was the lust on the inside that drew you. Amen. To yield to that temptation. God allowed it to come because he had faith and confidence in your faith that you would overcome that trial, that temptation, that test. Uh, and so when you give in, it's because you did not take advantage uh, of the opportunity to be developed in your faith. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me this evening? Amen. God wants us to be developed in our faith. Uh, he wants us to walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, he wants us to follow after the spirit and not follow after the flesh. Uh, amen. He wants us to be obedient and not disobedient. He wants his blessings to be upon us uh, and not his cursings. Hallelujah. Amen. But it's up to us. Amen. But if we're not careful, we'll blame everybody else. Uh, amen. But I'm telling you that the, the problem uh, of the perpetrator is is the one you look at in the morning when you're trying to brush your teeth uh, and try to get your breath cleaned up. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. When you look in the mirror, amen, and you look at yourself, amen, the, the biggest problem that you have uh, is the one looking back at you from that mirror. Can somebody say amen from the glass? Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible's going to call it the glass as we get into Scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so the majesty of the Lord. In other words, he's all-powerful. God is omniscient. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. He's a powerful God. He's an awesome God. And y'all have heard me say this. He's an awful God. Come on, amen? Not in the sense of he's just bad. I'm just telling you he is a God of judgment. He's awful. He's, uh, amen, he's to be revered. He's to be feared. Uh, he's to be respected. He's to be held in awe. Are y'all hearing me this evening? Uh, amen. So God, he's a, he's a God of majesty. He's a sovereign God. He's a just God. Uh, he'll do what is right and what is just. And we have to keep our faith uh, and our confidence in this fact. Amen. That, that is our hope. Amen. And that's what Isaiah the prophet is trying to, amen, to give some comfort to Judah and to Jerusalem and that he's telling them about the promises of God and our hope is in the Lord, amen, a hope of the Messiah, the hope, amen, of the coming Messiah out of the lineage of David and so forth. So the creator is also contrasted with idols, amen. Isaiah talks about how that, amen, that God is so different from the idols. Idols are just uh, things made with man's hands, amen, Idols have eyes, but they can't see. Idols have ears, but they can't hear. Idols have hands, uh, but they can't reach out and help you. Amen. They have feet, but they can't come to where you are. Amen. But the true and the living God, hallelujah, he has eyes that are open. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. And he's looking upon his people. Amen. He has an ear that is open and intent uh, unto the cry of his people. He has a hand that is not shortened. Come on, don't you remember when you were sinking down deep in the mire? how that God reached down farther than you can reach up. Come on, amen. I'll tell you, the world uh, had put you down so much, and even when people tried to help you, amen, their hand was just too short. Uh, you had drifted too far down. You were down in the mud, down uh, in the mire, but Jesus came by. Uh, amen, I'm 
telling you, we serve a God that is alive, a God that is able to reach down farther than we can reach up. And when he passes by, come on, amen, take advantage of that opportunity and reach up as far as you can. And even though there's a divide, there's a gap, I'm telling you, the love of God, amen, will cause his hand to reach down farther than you can reach up. Hallelujah. Amen. We serve a God that has a hand that is able to reach out. Come on, that same God that brought us up out of the mire is the same God. Amen. That when you're in trouble, amen, when the devil is all around you and the host of hell is assailing you, amen, understand that that same God, he stands ready. Don't let him pass by. Don't let him walk on by, but call upon him when the devil is breathing on your neck and you don't know what else to do. Just throw up your hands and start praising the Lord like Paul and Silas at midnight in prison. They just threw up their hands in their hearts. Amen. They couldn't put up their literal hands because they were bound in stocks and chains, but they lifted their spiritual hands. Amen. They lifted up their heart and they praised and magnified the Lord because they understood that this is a true God. This is a living God. This is a God that has a hand that is able to reach down in the midst of my trouble. Can somebody give him praise tonight? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So our creator is greater than idols. Amen. And that's what Isaiah tries to relate to the children of Israel. Chapter 49 through 57. He concentrates on the coming Messiah. Amen. He's he's the he's saved, he's the savior and he's the suffering servant. Amen. He's a savior and a suffering servant. Amen. This rejected but exalted one will be uh, for their iniquities and usher in the kingdom of peace and righteousness throughout the earth. Amen. And all who acknowledge him all who call upon him with a heart that is broken, a heart that is sincere, amen, all that call upon him, amen, and acknowledge their sins and trust in him, he will save. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that if we'll acknowledge him and acknowledge our sin and call upon him for his help, uh, amen, he'll come down and he'll wash us uh, and cleanse us. Uh, he'll give us a brand new heart. He'll give us a brand new spirit. He'll put his spirit within us. Come on, amen. He'll cause us to want to love him. Uh, amen. I love him even more. He'll cause us to want to tap into more of his grace. Uh, he'll cause us, amen, when, when before you were listening to the devil and the devil said you can't do this and you can't do that and you'll never be able to serve God like she does or like he does. Amen. The devil loves to try to compare you to somebody else. But I'm telling you, as me and Jesus, we got our own thing going. Amen. I thank God that I'm not to compare myself with you or you or him or her. Amen. But I'm looking to Jesus and I'm so unworthy. But I thank God that his grace is sufficient. His mercy endures forever. Amen. I said, God, amen, will reach down if I'll cry out unto him he'll help me in my time of trouble can somebody say amen hallelujah he'll save us he'll help us can somebody give him praise tonight hallelujah amen might not get to finish tonight but that's all right amen so the book of Isaiah also the book of Isaiah is a miniature Bible so now when I ask you later and say who can tell me about the book of Isaiah and who can tell me about Isaiah He's the Shakespeare of the Bible. Amen? He is an evangelical prophet. Are you with me? Amen. And so also the book that he has written is a miniature Bible. What do you mean? Well, the first 39 chapters are comparable to the Old Testament, which is made up of 39 books. The New Testament, amen, his last 27 chapters are comparable to the 27 books of the New Testament. Are you with me? Amen. So when you look at the book of Isaiah, it is a miniature Bible. Amen. 66 chapters, just like the Bible has 66 books. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And so the, the, the first 37 or uh, 39 books, sorry, 39 books, which uh, is a type of the Old Testament, it focuses on judgment upon immoral and idolatrous men. 
Amen. So he's focusing on how God is going to judge Judah and judge Jerusalem because judgment must first begin at the house of God. And then God's going to begin to judge those surrounding nations. Are y'all with me? Amen. So, so it's just like the Old Testament. It's, it's showing that God is the king. God is in control. That God is sovereign. That he is the majestic one. Majestic one. Amen. And so God is going to send judgment because uh, of the sins of the people. Amen. Well, when you take a look at the final 27 chapters, uh, it's like the 27 books of the New Testament, and it declares the message of hope. Amen. So the New Testament is a book of hope. It's a message of hope. And when you look at Isaiah and the last 27 books, which is a type of the uh, 27 chapters, is a type of the 27 books of the New Testament. Amen. Are you all with me? So it declares hope. It declares a, a message of hope. Amen. So Isaiah is also like the St. Paul of the Old Testament. Are you with me? So Isaiah is like the St. Paul of the Old Testament. Remember Paul... He trained under Gamaliel. He was of the straightest sect of the Pharisees. Uh, amen. He was a well-polished, uh, amen, orator. Are you with me? He was, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, when he got the Holy Ghost and when he learned, uh, amen, how that the Scriptures pointed to Christ and he became a, a, a great uh, apostle, amen. We're going to talk about that Sunday evening, how uh, he thought he was such a great apostle, but in the end you'll see as he writes his books, uh, amen, he's getting lower and lower and lower and lower, and then all of a sudden he says, don't even list me on the, amen, on the saved, amen put me among the sinners because I'm the chief sinner. Hallelujah. First he says in the book of Ephesus, I'm a chief apostle. Amen. But then when you get down, uh, amen, to 1 Timothy as one of his last books, uh, he says I'm the chief of sinners. Amen. Are you understanding? He ascends from a prideful man into a man of humility as he goes through the process uh, of being developed as a true apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know why I got into all that. We'll talk about that on Sunday evening if the Lord permits. Amen. But here it is. Amen. Amen. Isaiah is like a, an apostle Paul of the Old Testament. Amen. He, he, he evidently came from a distinguished Jewish family. Amen. So he had a, an upbringing where he was taught. Amen. Are you with me? But also he was anointed by God to be a prophet. Amen. He's the great poet and prophet. He's the great poet and prophet. He, he's uncompromising. When you think about Isaiah, you need to think about that. If you want to be a great prophet, if you want to be a great apostle, if you want to be a great woman or man of God, uh, amen, there's a certain things that we need to emanate, certain things we need to follow after, amen. And here's an example of a man uh, who was uncompromising. Are you with me? Amen. He was uncompromising, but also he was sincere. He was sincere in his prophecy and his work of ministry, he was sincere. He was uncompromising. He was sincere, but he was also compassionate. Are you with me? Those are three things that we need to be effective to do the work of God. Amen? We've got to be sincere. We've got to be compassionate. And we've got to be uncompromising. Come on. Amen? Hallelujah. We have to be an example of what we teach. We have to be an example of what we preach. We have to be an example of what we say. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. So, he gives emphasis in the first 39 chapters on the Messiah as king. In the last 27 chapters, chapters 40 through 66, like in the New Testament, he gives emphasis on the suffering servant. Are you with me? Amen. And then also we also see that he's uh, not only the Messiah, a suffering servant, but he's also still king. He's a king going through the process of suffering to bring about reconciliation between man and God. Are you with me? Amen. And so that's what we see. So we also see an amazing, uh, amazing messianic prophecies of Isaiah uh, that are literally fulfilled in the life of Christ. So I'm going to show you that in just a moment where several of the prophecies that Isaiah give concerning the first and the second advent. Amen. Many of those prophecies, you can look at the scriptures in the New Testament where they were fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Proving that he is the Christ. Proving that he is the Messiah. Hallelujah. So what about the time? The time of Isaiah. Assyria was growing in power when Isaiah was called. Amen. Amen. Uh, Isaiah lived during the time of the military threat to Judah 
Amen. And he warned the kings uh, against trusting in alliances with other nations. Amen. Are you with me? God wants us to be very careful who we pledge allegiance to. God wants us to be very careful who we align ourselves with. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. I hope that's clear. I hope you understand that. Somebody might offer you a partnership. Somebody might offer you a position. But you need to make sure it's God. You need to make sure it's the Lord's will. You need to make sure it's not going to move you out of the place where God wants you to be. Come on, amen. Amen. Satan moved David to number the people, the children of Israel. Amen. So David stepped out of the place where he was uh, had the favor and the blessing of God, and he stepped into a place uh, because Satan moved him to number uh, the children of Israel. Read it again. Amen. Joab said, why are you doing this? Joab, his uncle, he said, why? I believe that was his uncle. Amen. He said, why are you doing this? Amen. You know that in so many words, he's saying, you know that God said not to number. Don't put your faith and your trust and your confidence in the numbers. Amen. But put your faith and your trust in me. Amen. And so that's that's the issue and the problem here is that we have to be very careful. And, and the prophecy of Isaiah was telling uh, Judah, amen, don't put your allegiance in man or armies or, or numbers. Amen. But put your faith, your confidence. Confidence, uh, amen. Keep it in the Lord and Him alone. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. God is our source. God is not a resource. He's not one of our sources. He is our source. Hallelujah. We might have resources, but God is the source. There are to be no more sources along with God. Are you with me? Amen. So God is the source. We might have resources available, but always, amen, remember God is the source. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he says, listen. So he warns them about pledging allegiance with other kings. Uh, he's a contemporary of Hosea and Micah. He prophesied during the last years of the northern kingdom, and he ministered to the southern kingdom. So he prophesied at the end of the, uh, the years of the northern kingdom, but he, he prophesied, amen, or, and he ministered during, uh, to the southern kingdom, amen, so, which was Judah, who, who followed the sins of her sister. Isn't that amazing? The ten tribes who followed out the Jeroboam, remember, oh, we don't want you to go to Jerusalem to worship. So he put the calf there and amen to worship. We've gone to that place, amen, where he was set up the camp of the of Israel, amen. And they, they worship and there's an old altar there where apparently the calf was up on that altar. We don't know if that's the original uh, scaffolding that's there, amen. But nonetheless, we've gone to that place in Israel before. Amen, we're Jeroboam. So the children of Israel, he said, don't go down to Jerusalem to worship. We'll just make a God here, and you just stay here and worship. You understand? Amen. And so the, the children of Judah, they followed after their sister Israel in rebellion against God. Are you all with me? Amen. We have to be very careful to take advantage of opportunities to see examples and learn from examples. Are you with me? Amen. There are consequences to decisions. The message on Sunday, amen, decisions, uh, amen, our choices have consequences, amen. Sometimes our decisions can cause severe consequences, amen, and our choices are developing our character. Y'all remember the message, amen, so we have to be very careful. Judah did not make the right decisions. Judah did not make the right choices. She followed after her sister into folly, amen, worshiping other gods, pledging allegiance with other nations instead of trusting God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. So what about the Christ? Now, uh, the Christ. So these are the prophecies. If we look at the, the book of Isaiah, amen, he gives messianic prophecies that are clearer and more explicit than those in any, any other Old Testament prophet, whether it's a major or minor prophet, in the book of Isaiah, we'll see clear and distinct prophecies concerning the Messiah. And uh, if you want that, I can give it to you sometime. I thought about preparing a message on it, but there's a whole list of uh, Old Testament scriptures from Isaiah and how they are fulfilled in the New Testament, amen, w with Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So he is the Messiah. Actually, he has listed here 17, 17 prophecies given in the book of Isaiah that are fulfilled in the New Testament concerning Christ. 
and the first advent of Christ's coming. The second advent, he also gives prophecy, sometimes not just of the first advent, as I was saying earlier, uh, but also the second advent, and sometimes the prophecies are combining the two. Are you with me? So you have to be very careful. Just like in the book of Matthew 24, you have to think about the audience. Jesus is talking to Jewish brethren. He's talking about how things are going to happen with Israel, so it's almost in a reverse. Uh, amen. So he's talking about them, about things that's going to happen at the close of tribulation. And then he closes out in the book of Matthew talking about the rapture of the church. Uh, but of course, we know the rapture of the church will happen before tribulation. And then tribulation, God's primarily dealing with the Jews. Uh, and then he'll actually come and put his foot up on the Mount of Olives. Amen. According to Old Testament. Testament prophecy and even prophecy, prophecies from Isaiah will be fulfilled in the second advent of Christ's coming. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. So powerful stuff here. There are eight scriptures or eight prophecies that he gives concerning the second advent of Christ's coming. Amen? Which is when he literally comes back to this earth at the close of tribulation. Now, another brilliant thing that he does, he's a Shakespeare. Uh, amen? Shakespeare or a a Paul type in the Old Testament and he takes a look at the five offerings he takes a look at the five offerings that the children of Israel were to perform and he looks at Christ and this is found in chapters 52 and chapter 53 chapter 52 and chapter 53 of Isaiah I'm giving you a survey now amen so we'll be able to study it and read it and then we'll say wow I remember the pastor saying this amen or I, I can look back at my notes if a couple of you are writing down notes amen Hallelujah, the notes in my mind. Amen. Are you with me? So, so in chapter 52 and 53, he brilliantly brings out how, uh, amen, there are five offerings that Israel was to give. There was the burnt offering. There was the meal offering. There was the peace offering. There was the sin offering. And there was the trespass offering. Are you with me? So he brilliantly shows in, in verses and his prophecy how that Jesus fulfills those five offerings. They were all pointing to the coming of the Messiah. They were all pointing to Jesus Christ, uh, and it's all bundled up in chapter 52 and chapter 53 of the book of Isaiah. Read it again. Amen. So here we see the, the different aspects of the work of Christ. Amen. And so, amen, wholehearted sacrifice. That it typifies the burnt offering. Wholehearted. He was all in. Come on, amen. Jesus was all in. Amen. He was here to do the will of who? The will of the Father. He was in. I'm telling you, he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible said he prayed until his sweat became his great drops of blood. Amen. But he, but he came with the purpose to fulfill the will of the Father. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. I'm telling you, the excruciating. He knew everything. Come on. He was just as much God as God the Father and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. God the Son is agonizing in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. But he's giving wholehearted service uh, he's come on mission for the amen for the father hallelujah he said I'll not speak any words except the father give them to me he's come to do the will of the father amen and so Jesus is there and he says nevertheless not my will but thy will be done it's all right sometimes in prayer to try to bargain and say God can you just let me get over with this uh, God can you just let this pass me by uh, but I'm telling we ought to say at the end like Jesus the example our supreme example nevertheless not as I will but thy will be done I'll be a whole burnt offering I'll be totally dedicated unto you amen I'll be a, a give wholehearted sacrifice and be a, a burnt offering for you God if this consumes me so be it amen I'm on business for you you're king of my life you're Lord Lord of my life. You're Abba. Hallelujah. You're my Father. And what you will, I will do. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And then, amen, and I've got the scriptures here, but I won't share that. Amen. But then his, so his, his perfect character, his perfect character is an example of the meal offering. It was to be perfect. Are you with me? 
Amen. It couldn't be contaminated. It had to be perfect. Jesus, uh, amen, presented himself perfect. Uh, amen. We talked a little bit about that. As long as we are being developed, uh, as long as we are growing, as long as we are teachable, amen, God sees us as perfect. Uh, as long as we have not arrived, as long as we are not going back, uh, as long as we have not become stagnant, as long as we are developing, uh, amen, with uh, the environment that God has put us in, uh, if we're doing like Joseph uh, and others are taking notes, that God is with us. Amen. That shows that we're not dead, but we're alive. That shows that we're striving. We're teachable. We're perfect. Even as the Lord our God is perfect. Amen. I may not be ripe yet. Amen. But I'm not dead. Hallelujah. I'm growing and I'm going. I'm going and I'm growing. Come on. Amen. I'm growing and I'm going and I'm going and I'm growing. Are y'all hearing me tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm coming. Amen. Amen with a perfect character hallelujah amen I'm going to be holy I'm going to be righteous I'm going to walk in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ he is Jehovah Sitkanu he is my righteousness I will walk in Christ He, the life that I live he said I live yet not I amen but it is Christ that liveth in me come on amen Paul understood this amen I must live a perfect life I must live a holy life. I must live a righteous life. But it's not me. It is Jesus inside of me. I used to get by going to the theater and watching certain movies. I used to could sit in front of the television. I'm at the television and watch certain things. I used to could go different places. Amen. But now there's somebody that abides on the inside. And he is perfect. And he's moving me into perfection. He's making me into that instrument that I could be used for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm not just a burnt offering. Amen. I'm not just all in, but I want to be perfect. I want to be righteous. I want to be holy. I want to be as that meal offering. Can somebody give him praise? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then he's, Jesus, he brought atonement. Jesus brought atonement Amen. And Isaiah lays this out, how that Jesus in uh, chapter 53, verse 7 through 9, amen, he, he, he issues peace. Come on, amen. We were enemies of God. Come on, amen. Know that your friendship with the world makes you at enmity with God. You are an enemy of God except the blood of Christ be applied to your heart and your life, except he abide, amen, in you, except you're born again. You are an enemy of God. Can somebody say amen? Now, God loves the sinner. He loves, uh, amen, the sinner, but he hates the sin, and sin separates from God. But God has made a way, hallelujah, through the giving of his son, Jesus Christ, uh, amen, and the precious, uh, amen, blood that was shed on Calvary's cross uh, has made a way of atonement hallelujah amen that all our sins could be blotted out and we can be reconciled unto God and given a ministry of reconciliation unto the Lord can somebody say amen hallelujah so he paid for the transgressions of the sins of the people amen so he was that sin offering are you with me sin offering Paul said where is it? Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Read that again and think about these, uh, these offerings. Are you with me? Think about how Jesus fulfilled it and how he's calling us to fulfill those offerings. Are you with me? Amen to twofold, uh, amen, twofold meaning of scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. So it has historical significance, prophetic significance, in that Jesus fulfilled it, but also practical significance, the threefold layering of scripture. Are you with me? Talking about these offerings. Amen. So Jesus paid the debt for sin, for transgression. He was the sin offering. Amen. And then, uh, did I miss one? It seemed like I missed one. Amen. Praise the Lord. The atonement, I'm sorry, was a peace offering. The atonement was a peace offering, but he also paid for the transgression, which was the sin offering. Amen. Are y'all with me? So I skipped that. The peace offering 
Amen. So the peace offering was the atonement. Now we're at peace with God. We've been reconciled to God. But also, he was that sin offering and that he paid the debt that we could never pay. We owed a debt we could never pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone just to wash my sins away. Amen? Now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, because Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. And I probably tore that up, amen, but y'all get what I'm saying, amen? Hallelujah, amen. So Jesus has paid the price for our sins as a sin offering, amen? And we're to be that living sacrifice. Are you with me? Amen, so I combine those two. But then the fifth offering, amen, he died for the effects of sin. He died for the effects of sin. What is that? That's the trespass offering, the trespass offering. Read what Paul is saying to the church at Rome again, chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, and also read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 3 or 4, amen, and think about these offerings, amen, hallelujah, again, historical, prophetic concerning Christ, practical concerning the believer, amen, hallelujah, and I'm not going to get there tonight, amen, just give me a few more minutes here, and we'll get into the scripture on the next time, is that all right, amen, so what is the keys to Isaiah, the keys, what's the key word? in the book of Isaiah. Amen. We've learned a lot already, but the key word is salvation. What does the word Isaiah mean? What does the word Isaiah mean? Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. Isaiah is a miniature Bible. 66 chapters. Amen. 37 chapters representative of the Old Testament, 27 chapters representative of the New Testament. Are you with me? Amen. What a wonderful book this is. Amen. Hallelujah. And so here, amen, we understand that salvation is the meaning of the prophet's name. Are you all with me? Now when I give you the test, you all know the answer, right? What does Isaiah mean? Come on, amen. So, a salvation appears 26 times in the book of Isaiah. In chapters 1 through 39, we see a portrait of a man, uh, a, of man's great need of salvation, like the Old Testament. It shows us a picture of man's need, man's depravity, and man's need of salvation. Amen. And then, hallelujah, chapters 40 through 66 reveal God's great provision of salvation. So the, the, the part of the book of Isaiah that represents the Old Testament deals with, uh, amen, the uh, proclivity to sin. I think that's the word. Amen. It deals with, uh, amen, the wretchedness of man. Deals with the sinfulness of man. Deals with the selfishness of man. Amen. But then in the last books, amen, or the last chapters of, of this book, Representative of the New Testament, it deals with God's provision of salvation. Amen? So Isaiah solemnly warns Judah. Now, this was the first message that I preached from chapter 1, the summary of this book. Isaiah solemnly warns Judah of an approaching judgment because of the moral depravity, political corruption, social injustice, and especially spiritual Idolatry. Now, does that sound familiar today? Historical, prophetic, practical. Are you with me? Amen. So Isaiah is, is warning Judah that judgment is coming because you have missed the mark. You have followed after Israel. You have followed after your sister into rebellion against God. Amen. Hallelujah. There is moral depravity. There's political corruption. There's social injustice. And there's spiritual idolatry. Amen? And so God's judgment is coming. But also he wants to let them know that God will remain faithful to his covenant in preserving a godly remnant. Amen? And he promises salvation and deliverance, amen, through the coming Messiah. And that's the message of Isaiah the prophet. Amen? Hallelujah. So he's simply telling them that redemption and restoration will come through the Messiah. There is hope down the road. Amen. You missed it. You will be judged. 
But if you'll repent and turn back to God, amen, there is hope. There's an opportunity for restoration. What have we been talking about with uh, the book of Zechariah? Amen. Repentance, redirection, refreshing, restoration, revival. Amen. God wants to send revival, but it starts with repentance. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Amen. God wants to send revival, but it starts with repentance. Amen. And now if we wanted to look at chapter 2, can I just close with a little bit of this, just a picture to open it up so that you'll hopefully read it between now and next Wednesday night. Is that right? And I'm going to stop. But, but I wanted to title this Pride versus Humility because Sunday night I'm going to give you a picture of what God is trying to do with us. He is trying to conform us into the image of Christ. Christ humbled himself a little lower than angels, even to the death on the cross. Are you with me? So Jesus, our supreme example, pictures humility. Amen? Paul the apostle, we're going to see a man and how God transitions him. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Amen? God transitions him, amen, to a humble man of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And we'll see that uh, in a little bit. Amen? So he goes through a process of being packaged for the purpose of God. Amen? You and I are going through a process, and we have been packaged for the purpose of God. God has a plan, and it's your life. Amen? Your life, but it's God's plan. Are you with me? Amen? And you're being processed to be packaged for the purpose of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And so in chapter 2 it says, The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days. When? The last days. That the mountain of the Lord's house, what is that? The mountain of the Lord's house. Where is the Lord's house here that Isaiah is speaking about? Where is the Lord's house? What's the name of the city coming down? It's Jerusalem. We're going to have a new Jerusalem coming down, right? But the Lord's house, so he's talking about Israel. He's talking about Jerusalem, which is the highest point over there, the mountain where the mount is, where Abraham offered Isaac, where the tabernacle was built. Are you with me? Amen. Where the tabernacle will be rebuilt. And he's saying here, it shall come to pass in the last days. When are we living and he said that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Amen. So this place where the Lord's house belongs, Jerusalem, will be established. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost there. Praise the Lord. I'm ready to run. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said in the top of the mountains, that's Jerusalem, that's the highest point. Amen. He said and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow unto it. Praise God. Can I tell you that this prophecy is being fulfilled right now? Amen. Our president just, he's been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. One of the three that he's been nominated for. You don't hear that in the media. Amen. But the peace accord between Israel and the United Arab Nations. Amen. So he is, because he has uh, declared Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel and moved our embassy there, now other nations, and not even some of the nations that belong to this peace accord, are saying, we want to move our embassy to Jerusalem too. Why? It's the prophecy of Isaiah coming to pass in this hour. Praise God. Hallelujah. Boy, I don't know about you, but I feel good about that. Amen. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass that in the last days, where are we living? That the mountain of the Lord's house, that's Jerusalem, it's saying the mountain of the Lord's house, where the temple of the tabernacle belongs. It's not there yet, but it's going to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Shall be established in the top of the mountain. So what has happened? Jerusalem has been established as the capital city of Israel. So this prophecy from Isaiah has been fulfilled in our generation just a short time ago. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we're at the brink of the coming of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at this now. So all the embassies are moving there, the embassies of the different nations. And many people shall go and say, Come ye. Did y'all ever have anybody from this church go to Israel and say, Y'all need to go? Amen. 
Hallelujah. We have fulfilled prophecy, the prophecy of Isaiah, because we've gone and said you need to go, amen. Hallelujah. So, and many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. What do we do when we're there on a tour? Amen. We take supplies at a Jerusalem support center, but we're also going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We're going to learn the scriptures and where they were recorded in different sites and locations in the mountain of the Lord. Are you with me? Amen. And so he says, he will teach us of his way. So as we go there, and I'm sharing the scripture that took place, uh, for example, on the Mount of Beatitudes, and I'm sharing that, that, uh, that, those verses of scripture there. Amen. I'm actually reading and learning and teaching uh, about what Jesus did years ago. History is being fulfilled in prophecy and being put into practical purposes or use. Are you with me? So we have gone there on a tour and we have learned, wanted to walk where Jesus walked and learn what Jesus taught in the places he walked. Are you with me? Amen. And so he says, And many people shall many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. I want to go walk where Jesus walked. Have y'all ever said that? I'd like to go to Israel and walk where Jesus walked. Come on, amen. I've been walking. We've walked the shores of Galilee. Amen. We've walked the, uh, the Via Della Rosa. Amen. Hallelujah. Where Jesus carried his cross. We've walked it. Amen. We've seen church groups walking it, carrying crosses and so forth. Amen. Are you with me? So, And that's what Isaiah is saying. Amen. He's saying, listen, we will walk in the paths. Uh, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then next he starts talking about the millennial reign in chapter 4. So look at that. The tours to the Holy Land are fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah concerning the mountain of the Lord, which is Jerusalem. Amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Hallelujah. Love the people of Israel. Amen. They're still God's chosen people. We're, we haven't replaced Israel. God is still married to Israel. And God is going to fulfill the 70th week of Daniel during the seven-year tribulation. Amen? The church age, which is a parenthesis of time, a pause between 69 and 69th and 70th prophetic years uh, uh, that Daniel, uh, amen, prophesied concerning Israel. And here's Isaiah prophesying. And we're going to learn in just a little short time, uh, amen, if the Lord tarries, of how that we are a part of the fulfillment of what is taking place, even in the scriptures I've read here in, a, in the book of Isaiah chapter 2. Amen. We have fulfilled prophecy by flying that 14-hour flight and walking where Jesus walked and sharing the scriptures that Jesus uh, did and did, amen, and performed. Are you with me? And holy men of old, led by the Holy Ghost, wrote it in the holy canon of scripture. And we have helped to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. And now Trump, whether you're with him or against him, God has used him to do what many presidents had promised, and that was to move our embassy to Jerusalem, indicating that Jerusalem is the capital city of Israel. Now other nations are following. Why are they doing it? Some people said this, should have, this could have never happened, but why is it happening? Because Isaiah prophesied that it would happen. Because God said through his prophet what he would do. Are you with me? I don't know about you, but I, I trust in the sovereignty of God. Well, I trust in the majesty of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we worry about little things that we're facing. Amen. But I'm telling you, hallelujah. Don't worry about the devil. Don't worry about his traps and his tricks. You just keep your eyes on Jesus. That's why the Bible says, let us lay aside the weight and descend it thus so he's a beset us. And let us... Uh, run the race to set before us looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith amen hallelujah let us stand together amen Isaiah his name means salvation is of the Lord amen God has made a way of salvation amen he's revealed our shortcomings as portrayed 
from the first 37 chapters signifying the Old Testament and then he has demonstrated the hope through the Messiah in the last 27 chapters which typifies the New Testament. Amen. This word is yes and amen. Amen. You can build on anything else and it's like building on sinking sand. But if you'll build your life on this, come on, amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh. We beheld Him as the only begotten of the Father. Jesus Christ fulfilled this Word. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is uh, the Word made flesh. Are you with me? Amen. And so this Word, amen. Jesus said to Peter in his uh, great confession of who Jesus was as the Father revealed he said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Why did he say that? Because he said, Whom say ye that I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, Upon this rock, this revelation, this fact, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Will you be a wise man or a wise woman and build on the rock? Hallelujah. Amen. There is a rock beside me, God told Moses. Amen. There is a rock beside me. And he said, I'll put you in the cleft. When I get you into the ministry where when I finally get you through the process and get you packaged for the purpose that I have for you, I'm going to put you in the cleft and I'm going to show you my hinder parts. I'm going to show you my glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the cleft. Hallelujah. Thank God I'm on the rock, Jesus Christ. I'm built and founded on the Word of God. Amen. And God is moving me into the cleft. And He's about to reveal His glory. He's taking the church, amen, that is founded on the rock. And He's moving us into a place and a position to fulfill the purpose of God. The plan of God. The divine plan. The divine purpose. And we're about to see a manifestation of his glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share this word. We ask God that you'd help us tonight, Lord, as we look to you, as we consecrate ourselves unto thee, O Lord, understanding that we belong wholly uh, and unreservedly, totally surrendered unto you, Lord. For, Lord, if we were left to ourselves, we would be in a grave. We'd be dead. We would have to face eternal hell, fire, damnation, and brimstone. But, Lord, we thank you that you have made a way. We thank you for the way of hope, the way of life. Hallelujah. We praise you, God, for your grace that is sufficient. We thank you for your mercy that endures forever. Lord, we thank you, God, for the blessed hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you'd keep us now, protect us, shield us, guide us, direct us. Let your angels be encamped about us. Touch our loved ones. Shine the light of Jesus. Let the love of God flow through us. Help us, Lord, to light up the rooms. Help us, Lord, to shine forth your glory. Help us, Lord, to be your hands and to be your feet. Help us, Lord, to be your mouthpiece. God, give us a holy boldness that we might speak your word wherever we go. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, stand up in us. Stand up in us. Let the church be triumphant one more time. God, we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said?